Welcome to another edition of the Hockey Writers Podcast 2022-23 NHL Season Previews. I'm your host, Kyle Knopp, and I'm joined by my co-host, Matthew Zator, and today we are joined by Arizona Coyotes contributor, Haynes Evans. Haynes, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm, thank you all for having me on. It's good to get back on here and fire up this old MacBook and, and talk hockey. <laughs> well, we are excited to have you, so let's jump right into it, talking Coyotes hockey today. So, right off the bat, what are your expe- expectations for two of the new guys, Zach Cassian and Nick Booch said, coming into this season? Uh, you know, Zach Cassian is going to kind of be what Zach Cassian has been in his career. He, you know, he's going to be a guy to protect the younger cores coming in. Kai is going to be bringing a lot of young players up from the AHL this season. And, you know, they already have so many young guys now. And like Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, Barrett Hayton. So Cassian really comes in as a guy – to just continue what he does. He, he's going to be there to, you know, he's going to play on that fourth line role. He's going to be there to, you know, provide a spark if they need it. And he's, he's going to be there to stand up for the younger guys on the team. And, you know, Nick Bukestad comes in on an interesting situation. He didn't have a terrible year in Minnesota last year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think he can contribute really well for a, as a third line role this year for the Coyotes. So I'm excited to see him maybe, you know, provide a little bit spark in the faceoff circle, you know, help the area out in an area where the Coyotes have struggled recently and I, I think he can you know contribute some offense here and there absolutely yeah well I mean I have experience watching Zach Cassian in Vancouver and when he was on that we're thinking that he was going to have potential to be a really good uh, top six player and saw a lot of skill in his game but kind of moved to that physicality more of a physical player third fourth liner now and um, I thought he had a lot of potential when he was younger and uh, being that more finesse guy, but it uh, looks like that's not how we went, um, being more of that. I mean, really good. I mean, he's hit, hit a role in the NHL. Now he's that veteran guy, like you said, and I think Cassian is going to really be good um, for the Coyotes. He was he was okay in Edmonton at times, maybe overpaid for what he was mm-hmm. doing, but, um, you know, he's still a really good player and a uh, really good guy that could be, um, like he's a mentor for for the younger guys. And, you need that on a young team. Same with Bukestad. He's been around for a while now. And again, a lot of potential at the beginning of his career and kind of has tapered off as being that third, fourth liner now, but can still win draws, can still contribute in that way. So i um, really excited to see how those two kind of fit into the team. But let's talk about a guy that's been there for a while, uh, Clayton Keller. And he he is potentially could be the next captain of the team, maybe. But he did have a, you know, really great season last year, but got sidelined right at the end of the season. Um, Really scary injury. Um, Mm -hmm. But now healthy, assuming. I mean, he is healthy. How do you think, what are your expectations for Clayton Keller going into 2022-23 as being part of this, I'm assuming, part of this core moving forward? Yeah, you know, you're totally right there. He's... um for sure part of this team's core. He's the main focal point of this team's uh, core going forward. You know, he, he wants to be in Arizona. He wants to help this team for this rebuild. He wants to be there when it's all said and done. And, you know, he did. He had a nasty injury to end off the last season. And, you know, he's worked his way back tirelessly. He's already back to skating. He's in full gear practicing at the ice den with some other fellow NHL players. So he's progressed real nicely coming back. I think he's real hungry to continue and build off what he did last year. He had his best season since his rookie season so he really took that next step this past season and you know I if, if it continues the way it does and the Coyotes you know are lacking in the scoring department Clayton Keller is going to be that guy that's going to answer for the Coyotes and, and the team's for sure going to be looking for him when needed yeah absolutely I mean I think you know if it weren't for that injury last season I think there would have been a lot more talk this offseason about how the Coyotes need to build around him but because of what he suffered in you know one of his final games um I think it was like a week or two out I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. when it happened but yeah you know ever since that happened kind of the media has almost kind of forgot about him it seems um so you mentioned him being probably the main focal point of that core so I want to get your thoughts. Who else is on that core for this Coyotes team as they move forward through their rebuild? You know, I think looking at the roster now, you know, you want to say Jacob Chickren's part of this core. And, you know, I know we'll talk about him later and, you know, in the episode and his situation up in the air, what's going to go on there. But, you know, if we're looking at the team right now, we're looking at the roster. I think the, there's only three guys really, I think, stand out as a part of the core going forward. And it would be Clayton Keller, 
Um, I'm going to say it's going to be Barrett Hayton. It's going to be Lawson Krause. Those okay. are your three big fours right there. You're going to be building around these guys. Barrett Hayton is slowly improving and hopefully showing signs of being that guy they took fifth overall back in the draft. Uh, Clayton Keller's progressed nicely all in his career. And Lawson Krause had a huge breakout season last year. So yeah. these are three guys the guys want to build around. It's three veterans and a guy who's getting close to approaching that veteran status and, and Barrett Hayton. It's three guys you could really easily work your team around. They already have that confidence and that leadership. Um, respect in the locker room and all that. So I, I would say those three guys are for sure who the Kaiser are looking at. Uh, Nick Schmaltz could probably be argued for a fourth position there, but I think if you're looking just based off roster two or three years down the line, I think your you're three and Hayton, Keller, and Krause are really who the Kaiser are looking to build this team around. Well, it's funny you mentioned those two guys because that's my next question is if they're going to stay. And uh, Nick Schmaltz and Lawson Krause have been in trade rumors. Um, last yeah. season, they were both around – you know, talked about as being trade bait. Do you think they could potentially be guys that could be dealt um, to get, you know, more assets and more draft picks going into a draft that, you know, 2023 is probably the strongest draft we're going to have in like yeah. years. So, I mean, yeah. you know, the Coyotes are going to look, but we'll talk about the guy they're looking at for sure. But, you know, to get any amount of picks in this next draft is going to be huge. So, do you see them trading one of those guys moving forward or, or are they really part of this core and um, not trade bait? Yeah. You, you know, that's an interesting question you asked there. And, and you kind of have to look at it from two different perspective sides here. It's one, it's the Coyotes re-signed uh, Lawson Krause for arbitration signed into an extension of a contract well into the, into the rebuild Honestly, solidifying that they do want him to indeed be part of this core going forward. But at the same time, Bill Armstrong is already stated he's listening to offers on anybody and everybody. And if he finds a deal that benefits his team well enough and can help them take a year off the rebuild and it speed up it faster, he's going to pull the trigger on a trade. I think there are generally players like Clayton Keller who are probably untouchable. Nothing's going to get done with them. But I really think anybody else, as much as I would think the cores, those three guys, I think if someone threw a nice enough trade bait out there and it was a deal that Armstrong can't pass up for, like you said, picks in a very good draft year coming up this season, I don't think he'd hesitate to move it. But um, Nick Schmaltz, I think he he has an interesting situ- situation. He, you know, he's a kind of a guy who in the last few years in Arizona has had his ups and downs when he's hot. He's really prominent. He's on the scoring sheet and he shows up on stats. But when he's cold, he's invisible on the ice most nights. And he had that last season, and when he was hot, he was really, really hot. And I think that's what the Coyotes are going to look at this year is if he can play hot and remain hot going to the trade den- deadline, I think the Coyotes could look to move him. But if he stays cold and goes into one of the slumps, I think the Coyotes would probably end up keeping him through next season and just let his contract play out. That's the tough thing about when you're in a rebuild and you have guys that are outplaying uh, you know, the rest of the team, essentially, is when they're hot – you almost have to move them. And even if they are, you know, key pieces for the future, uh, you're more likely to get something better out of them if you do move them when they're having a big season. But at the same time, you know, you're looking at your team and you're like, all right, we kind of need them for the future. So <laughs> it's a big catch 22, yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, when you're in that situation in the standings. But, you know, you've, we've talked about some of these young players. So I want to get your thoughts on which of the young players – which one do you see taking the biggest step forward this season? That is one, probably the biggest question for the Kais this off season. You know, people want to be Logan Cooley. People want to be Dylan Gunther. And I know we're going to talk about it, so I'm not going to share my thoughts in there, but I'm looking at guys now who are in the HL who I think are going to take the next step to the NHL. And, and two guys who stand out for me is Victor Soderstrom on defense. Yep. and Liam Kirk going forward. I think those are two guys who have done really well developing down in the HL in Tucson with the Roadrunners. And I think um, Liam Kirk had a terrible injury to begin half, early in the beginning of last season, and, and it caused him to miss the rest of the year. So I think he's going to come out with that renewed passion, and he's going to show up in, in train camp. And I think he's a guy that easily could be on the roster starting this upcoming season, and it could make an impact. And Soderstrom's going to be a little different situation. The Coyotes have 11 roster defensemen right now heading into the year. So, you know, I, I want to say guys like Moser could take the next step. But right now with who the Coyotes have added, it, it's really a toss-up of who's getting playing minutes on a night and, and who's going to go down and, and start back in the HL conditioning. So 
I want to say out of the young guys, it would be uh, Soderstrom, Kirk, if I'm saying guys from the HL. If I'm looking at NHL, I would say that J.J. Moser probably continues to take forward strides in his progression of the game. Love it. I love that call out of Liam Kirk too. Yeah. So I, I, I am rooting for him so hard. Mm. <laughs> he's yeah, he's a fan too. favorite for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> wow. You mentioned two guys that I probably two of my favorite guys in the last few dra- couple drafts. <laughs> Dylan Genther, Rain Logan Cooley. We have talked about these guys on Howlers and Growlers multiple <laughs> times um, before it was um, unfortunately gone. Um, but, and, oh, we lost the host too. So <laughs> yeah, he, he's actually working for the actual team now. So he's yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he got called into go. the big leagues. Oh, uh, he's a step Hope you're old. watching Pat. Well, <laughs> Pat, Pat. He, he'll be on the uh, prospect corner coming up. So uh, we'll get to see him. Uh, but yeah, me on there. <laughs> <laughs> they have both of you guys on. We'll, like, we're Please. Unit. Just re, just see if we can rebuild that chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to talking about these two. I mean, these guys are probably the most exciting forwards that are coming up for the Coyotes in the NHL in general. But uh, so Dylan Genther had a heck of a season last year in the WHL. Unfortunately, got injured uh, towards the end. Couldn't compete in the Memorial Cup, which is unfortunate because I think the yeah. team really missed him. Yeah. Um, and Logan Cooley, who's been lights out since you know all year uh, great showings at any international tournament he's been in do you see any of these guys making the team out of training camp or are they both back to their junior teams no i was i was the question i was laying for it's the question every guy's fan i get asked all the time from people and in, in group chats is are these guys going to be in the nhl next year they are not going to be in the NHL next year <laughs> they um they could play 10 games. They may not even play the 10 game sample, but they're with the way the Coyotes are and knowing they have about a year or two still of, of just tanking before getting competitive, <laughs> there's no way the Coyotes are burning any years of these guys' entry level contracts yeah. to go out there and essentially get their confidence destroyed when the team's getting slaughtered night in and night out. Yeah. So, yeah. as much as I'd love to see Cooley and Gunther and, and Keller or Josh Doan on the line, I and people will have to save their, their fantasies like me for at least another year or two before those guys are, uh, out there, are prominent features on the, on the roster. I mean, I think you're playing with Connor Bedard. Yes. But, yeah. There you go. There we there you hopefully. Go. <laughs> and I think you bring up a great point, right? Is you don't want to necessarily rush these guys' development. Yeah. They can still development, uh, develop in the, uh, you know, junior leagues that they're at or wherever, uh, but to rush them to the NHL. And then, like you said, have their confidence destroyed on a rebuilding team is not always the best thing that you want for your, your prospects coming up. So, but that leads me to my final question, talking about the forwards here. How long does this Coyotes forward group take before they are starting to contend in the central? I'd say at least, I, I want to say another year. This is last year that the fans really have to like suffer through. And I, and I generally do believe this last year that the guys full on tank. I, I, and this year, honestly, is a reasonable time to tank. You're going to tank with the draft coming Absolutely, up. But I think yeah. next year, while the guys are not going to be a competitor next year, I think that they finally move to bringing up key pieces of the roster next year. And they actually get into trying to compete to win hockey games. But I think I, I'd say two more years before they're actually competitive. But at least at the most, it makes guys come better, feel better. It at least one year left of just absolute misery watching us lose on a nightly basis before the team is hopefully winning at least as much as they're losing. So yeah. it, it's still a long ways away, but you know it's going to come sooner than rather than later. They're going to be at the end of it, and they're going to be competitive. Nice, I, I see that too. I, yeah. I think probably this one more year and best year to do it with who's at the top of the draft and who is in the draft in general. I mean, even if they don't get the first overall pick, you're going to get a heck of a player. Yeah. Um, I would argue generational. They're they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're in that top five, I mean, my gosh, you're going to get some. The top 10 is, is a guaranteed win. If you get anywhere in the top 10, you're, you're the top 10 of the next year's draft, this upcoming year's draft, no offense, but makes top 10 of last season's draft look like a joke yeah, in, yeah. in terms of the, yeah. just the skill level of the two yeah no i i definitely agree with that so um 
you know, I do see that timeline as a pretty realistic timeline for them. So um, we'll see how it all plays out. All right, let's shift over to the defense and talk about a couple of new guys here. Another guy that I'm pretty familiar with uh, coming from Vancouver. Um, Troy Detroit. Stetcher, also in Detroit, um, <laughs> played in Detroit as well, and was pretty good there. I really yeah. liked him over there. So Troy Stetcher, Josh Brown came over from the Senators. Um, what do you think about these two guys? What are your expectations? Um, are they similar to a, a Cassian, or will they provide more a bigger role than uh, expected? You know, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying they're Cassian in terms of they're just going out there to, you know, just kind of be that physical presence and, you know, kind of protect the young guys. But um, at the same time, I mean, these are guys who on most teams are going to be third-pairing defensemen. I mean, they're they're out there to play on a Coyotes team that just needs to keep the puck out of the net. And, I mean, honestly, not try to win as many games as possible, but at the same time, don't let your team get blown out or leave Karel Vamelka out to dry every night. So um, I think it's really it, – these guys come in on kind of a role similar to like Patrick Nemeth who got brought to Arizona in a trade. It's, you're here to kind of, you know – be that voice in the locker room, be that veteran presence in the locker room. And, you know, they have experience of playing like Josh Brown and, and Ottawa playing on a rebuilding team. They know what it's like doing that situation. And, you know, that's kind of their role here. They come in, you know, help keep the fuck out of the net, help mentor these younger guys in your roster and, you know, just help kind of get these guys through it. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to lose mentality as the season goes on. You lose that confidence in yourself when you're losing. So guys like Josh Brown and Troy Stetcher who've done this and gone through this in Detroit and in Ottawa, they, they know what it's like to lose and how to deal with losing, knowing it's going to get better in time. So I think that's going to be their biggest role. The team's going to kind of use them in. Yeah. I what? forgot about Nemeth. I, I should have added yeah. him there too. <laughs> <laughs> another, another guy from Detroit. Uh, so <laughs> I like Stetcher. Right? I, I thought he was a great puck moving right-handed defenseman and he was a, a alternate captain for the uh, world championship. So he yes, brings yeah. in uh, a lot of experience and a lot of leadership to that team. And especially as a third pairing, like, I think that's going to be huge for some of these younger guys. Yeah. I was advocating for Stetcher to come back to Vancouver, but uh, I didn't yeah, have it. Didn't quite happen. <laughs> Arizona <laughs> called to him. He, he yeah. Arizona <laughs> called home to him. And he had just, he had to take up. Apparently they were talking to him. So I don't know. <laughs> never know we never know all right this is the only question that matters haynes because this is the only oh, one gosh. people are tuning I know, into i know what this is yeah i know what let's this talk is be the title of this episode yes jacob chikrin <laughs> let's talk jacob chikrin will he be traded before the deadlines or has arizona changed their stance on him being as part of this rebuild of the future this is Probably be the question y'all asking that's going to give me a lot of hate from people on social media <laughs> uh, in terms of what my answer is here because I, I never fully have come out and said what I think my answer is on here, what my opinions are. Kind of kept quiet on it. I, I first things first, for people to get out of the way, there has nowhere been mentioned that Bill Armstrong has outright said that he wants to get rid of him. He has right. not said that he has been said the, he has said the opposite. He wants to keep Jacob chicken, in Arizona. Jacob chicken has not come out and said he wants to be traded either. He has said now that he wants to play playoff hockey at his age, which is yeah. understandable, but he has never said, I don't want to be here in Arizona. Move me out. He's already trained back with the team. He talks highly of his teammates. He likes in the situation he's in. So, I mean, it, I think one side of it, it gets looked at as in, Jacob Trickens just dying to get out of here. Bill Armstrong has been dying to move him. It's not that. I, it comes back down to Bill Armstrong would love to keep him around if he can. He's a young defenseman, a very good defenseman, and would love to keep him around. But at the same time, like we said before, it, there's no price that's wrong here. I mean, if yeah. someone throws out two first-round picks, for example, in the first round of this year's draft, you're going to take that deal if it, and all that, just with the magnitude of this draft coming up. So um, why – don't personally feel like he will be moved this season. I know that's a bummer. A lot of people I, who would just love to, to me to think that he's going to get moved, but I don't think it does happen personally, just because I think what the guys are asking for, there's a lot of teams that are not willing to give up their draft capital this year, especially in this year's draft. Yeah. I don't think it happens. Um, crazier things have happened. It could definitely get done. And if it does, then, I wish him the best, and I know for Kai's fans, they will be happy if he does get moved because then they'll be done hearing about all this trade drama. <laughs> so um, I, I don't personally think it happens. I think he's a Coyote through the season. Um, 
unless he outright comes out and says something, uh, I think that's how it's going to be until we hear differently from either side. Yeah. And so for what it's worth, I have a little bit of inside information. Uh, actually, uh, Chickering's cousin lives out here in the area, and I worked with him this summer. He's going to play college hockey. Uh, he's a he's a uh, 19-year-old freshman uh, this oh. year, but I worked with him this summer, and and he told me that Jacob and his girlfriend just bought a house in Arizona, and they ah. love it, and his girlfriend hates the cold. So, oh. you know, take that oh. for what you want. <laughs> take that for what you oh. want. Uh, but my, my, sound- my words aren't looking so bad now. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. I'm not looking like such a bad guy. I appreciate that. Yeah, so there, there's my insider information for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, it, if it hasn't happened yet, I don't think it's going to. I yeah. thought, you know, if it was going to happen, it was going to happen around the draft. Um, you know, it seemed like Arizona, if they are, if they were looking, they mm-hmm. definitely wanted a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And don't, no team wanted to pay it. So and I, yeah. I could still see it happening at the deadline. If, if, uh, sorry, uh, Chickren's having a big year and there's a team that needs that piece uh, and mm-hmm. he could fill that piece for a playoff run. I could see it happening at the deadline, but I, like you said, I think it's going to be, you know, probably a lot of return in this year's yeah. draft. And so uh, the team that's making the push has to be in a win now mode or else they're, they're not going to give that up. Yeah. I mean, like I say, this draft is premium. I mean, these picks are probably worth two first round picks of this past year. I mean, one, one of them. (laughs) So, I mean, it's going to take a lot for, for that. And I think that's reason why JT Miller in Vancouver wasn't traded before that too, because Canucks probably wanted that um, as part of it too. So um, none of these big pieces, I don't know how much trades are going to happen this year, honestly, a first round pick at least for sure. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. Let's talk about another veteran guy that um, rejuvenated his career coming to Arizona. Kind of a throwaway from Philadelphia. Everyone didn't really think he was going to do much, but became a threat. Uh, led the team in scoring on defense, um, but he wasn't traded, which was a little bit interesting because he would probably <laughs> fetch a lot at the deadline. Um, do you see him being part of this, tr- this team as a rebuild goes forward, or will he be trade bait? this year i think he's gonna be trade bait this year i i think he had uh the season last year was enough to to definitely spark teams interest and have teams calling in on him uh like you said the the flyers gave away shine goss spear for practically nothing yeah. last yeah. year and gave him to arizona for practically nothing and he really kind of took that to heart and, and it showed in his game he came out took that chance to play those first line minutes and be that key defenseman with especially with Jacob Chickering being gone for the majority of the season and, and he yeah. rolled with it and he looked great out there and he had one of his best statistical seasons, if not his best of his career. So, you know, I definitely think the market is calling higher than ever on him this season. And I think you could easily snag a second round pick. You might even be able to get a first rounder out of him, a late first rounder. I know Bill Armstrong can pull magic out of a hat. Like it's nothing. <laughs> um, so if he can, and he's hearing this, please pull magic out of a hat. Like it's nothing. Um, I think, I think he does get moved. I think he's, uh, I think he's having our big season in Arizona. I think he's going to, you know, benefit from playing, you know, 20 something plus minutes a night. So I think he has another really good season and, you know, and he's passed, you know, he's, he's far into his, almost into his thirties. Now he's past getting out of his prime and all that. He's not going to be kept around for this rebuild of the Coyotes team. Unless he outright said, I want to stay here for the rebuild. I think he's also going to want to go play playoff hockey if he can get it. So yeah, I, I think he gets moved this season. Uh, I think he'd be right at the trade deadline, like y'all said. And I'm looking about maybe a late first rounder, early second round pick out of them. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, probably right about where he's going to be this season. So it'll be uh, more more trade speculations throughout the year for you to write about. So that's always fun. <laughs> oh yeah, be a lot. <laughs> All right, moving over to one of your young defensemen this past season, JJ Moser was the only 2021 draft defense defenseman drafted from the 2021 draft uh, to play in a full season in the NHL last year. So what does his sophomore season look like in 2022-23? You know, perfect time to be talking about JJ Moser. I just actually wrote about him last week. (laughs) He's, um, you know, JJ Moser was a guy no one expected to make it. Uh, 21 year old kid getting drafted. He was an old kid. That, that that tells you a lot about the draft. He was, he was old getting drafted out of the draft at 21 and all that. And, and, you know, 
a lot of people expected him to, you know, play a full season in Tucson, coming over from, you know, Sweden or Switzerland and playing over in North America for the first time and played 18 games in Tucson, had 12 points, looked really good. Yeah. And now he got a call up because the guys had a lot of injuries and needed guys, but it's not like he came in and didn't produce. He, he came in and swatted in as one of the team's top, due to, top two, three defensemen for a whole chunk of the season. And he yeah, really yeah. ran with that role. He played – Top line minutes playing top line competition. He scored two goals in just his third, second or third career game with the Coyotes. He really got off to a hot start and it really took off really well for him and he was rewarded with it. And, you know, being a rookie, honestly, he saw that burn down come near the end of the season. He got frustrated with himself. Fatigue eventually catches up to you when you're playing, you know, guys like the McDavid's and the Ovechkin's and the, you know, Matthews and McKinnon's and all that. And it eventually caught to him and, you know, he fatigued and he slowed down and frustration shows in the year and a, in a long season, like a rebuild is. So, um, you know, his biggest area for him is just working on his game. You know, he has areas he's got to work on, like all young kids. He, he turns the puck over a lot um, and all that. And he's not the greatest when he's got the puck in his zone about getting the puck out. Um, so He's got areas of his game to work on, um, but, you know, he's poised for a big season. Like I said earlier, I don't know where he slots uh, with the defenseman having 11 rostered right now. He could benefit from going down to the HL to start the season, but I think if he stays up, I think he has real solid shot at, you know, at least a second line pairing on defense there and, you know, more solid minutes. He proved it last season, and if he can just critique and, you know, fine-tune his game, I think he could play a big, big role for this team. Yeah. Yeah, de- definitely agree with that. I like J.J. Mosier. I, I was actually surprised when I was looking at him. I was surprised he was actually drafted in the 2021 draft. And I was like, it's insane. I thought he was, I thought oh, he was yeah. drafted like a couple years ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's, like, no. Yeah, he's an old, old drafty. Yeah, yeah, he's an old yeah. drafty. Yeah. And he's a second round pick too. So. Yeah. Yeah, so he's going to be interesting to see what he does in his next year. I hope he does like what you said, um, keep, keep moving forward, because I, I really like his game, so um, we'll see. Um, you already mentioned the young defensemen are going to step forward, so we'll skip over that, because they were kind of ready for uh, Soderstrom. So um, let's move over to the goaltending now. And they have got a new goaltender um, to pair with Karel Bivamelka. Went through a ton of goaltenders last year. I think, uh, yeah, like a couple, like, couple, like nine, nine I think. of them. <laughs> okay, let's let's not completely trash the OT here with nine. <laughs> no, I think it was like seven or eight, though, wasn't it? I mean, it was uh, kind of a lot. Give, give me a quick second here. They had Milka, they played Car Hutton, Scott Wedgwood, and uh, Harry Sodery, and that was that was. And then Ivan Prozatov. So yeah, five, probably so. I five. think they went okay. through five goalies. Five goalies. Okay. I And uh, there's one of the East Coast teams, and I, I, I obviously did not prepare for this little tangent, uh, but there's one of, one of the East Coast teams played like seven or eight goalies this year. I don't remember who it was. It might have been uh, Washington, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought, I thought, uh, they were up uh, there. They were up yeah, there. they were up there quite a yeah. bit. So I, I knew it was kind of a lot, but. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus. So. No, it's okay. I was, I was honestly waiting for the ECHL call-ups from the guys from uh, Rapid City. So it really doesn't – I honestly expected more goalies as the season went yeah. on. So I was surprised it was close. <laughs> well, let's talk about a new guy that's coming over from New Jersey. Wedgwood played in New Jersey too. But uh, John Gillies, and he was pretty good in New Jersey. I, you know, Christy, who covers the – New Jersey Devils that really liked him. I know I've read a few of her articles about him. So what are your expectations for John Gillies coming in? You know, potentially the backup. He could potentially be the starter. Um, I'm yeah. assuming Vimalco will take that starter role, but it could also do a 1A, 1B thing. What do you think about Gillies? Yeah, you know, I, I, the Coyotes seem to be really lucky in, in grabbing Devils goaltenders and them doing something in Arizona. Scott Wedgwood's the streak breaker twice in Arizona. He's got his own parade that I – post at home that no one else knows about, but I, I throw one for him um, every year and all that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, he's in, um, you know, he's a really strong goalie this year as a backup. You know, he's played sometimes in St. Louis as well. And he, he's a really solid HL guy as well. So even if he doesn't start this season as a backup, he's a really good goalie who I for sure is going to get looks this year. Um, a, a guy we did forget to mention that they did have six goalies was Joseph Coronar. He did play one game last oh, yeah. season for the Coyotes. They had six goalies play. Um, <laughs> he is bad this season. Um, there's a good chance he could go for that back position. I think it's going to come down to him and John Gillies there and who gets it. But uh, 
nevertheless, Gillies is a great young goalie. He's like a Scott Wedgwood guy. He can steal games for you when you need him to and all that. But, you know, he's not a guy you're going to throw in the starting role and roll with. But, you know, if the guys need someone every now and then who can, you know, snag a game, steal a big one from like like to like Toronto or whoever it may be, <laughs> he's the guy that's going to uh, – he's the guy who can get it done. So uh, I'm expecting big things out of him if he ends up being the backup this year to Vimelka. He's He's got a little reputation to him, and, you know, if, if he does great, then I'll add him to the list of uh, parades I throw at home for him. So, I mean, he's got a lot of Ryan for him right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, all right. So let's talk about Veggie Milk because he – I loved him last year. I mean, Pat and I would go back, back and forth uh, during Coyotes games late at night when I was watching them and they're on, uh, you know, putting together the n- newsletter and holy cow, is he exciting. And so even though Vimelka did not have the best stats on paper, he had a really good season. So do you see him being that long-term starter? And what are your expectations for him coming into his sophomore season? You know, I'll answer the first one there. I think he's, I, I wouldn't say he's a goalie of, I, I want to say until the time the Kai's get into a competitive nature in which, you know, they're actually seriously competing for the the uh, central of that division at uh, that point. But I think he's a guy for the next, the next three seasons plus. I think he's the guy for Arizona. I think he's, um, I mean, we got to remember this kid came from Czech Republic, never played hockey in North America, came on as a last minute signing, uh, was basically expected to be an HL guy season and ended up beating out yeah. the expected backup. Yeah. Um, to become the backup and then beat out the guy who was the starter that was supposed yeah. to lose like 40 games for the Coyotes <laughs> out for the season. So he really came out of nowhere. And, you know, everybody took notice of him. I had people all the time text me, ask me, who's this Vimelka guy? Who, who's who's Corel Vimelka? This guy is out of nowhere. NHL yeah. on TNT when they were playing games even was praising this kid <laughs> coming out of nowhere doing the things he does. So I think he may not be the guy of the future, but I think he's the guy for the Kais right now for this rebuild. I think he uh, obviously doesn't want to lose, but I mean, I think he's just happy to be able to play hockey. I mean, he's getting a starting chance in Arizona. I think in the day, I think he's happy just to be here and, you know, help the team any way they can through all this. But uh, yeah, I, I'm expecting big things out in the second season. I'm expecting more uh, um, veggie magic coming out of him and all that. I'm going to be back in Raleigh this year on November 23rd. So hopefully he can steal a win for us there while we're down there. So, uh, or up there, but, uh, yeah, I'm expecting big things. I wouldn't say that he's going to win, you know, honestly, he's not going for the Vesna. Um, if I've seen one tweet about that, I don't know if that was a joke or not. He's not competing for the Vesna this season, but, uh, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people like he did this last year. I think if the Kais can give sustainable defensive help, and he doesn't have to face 40 to 50 plus shots a night, which he was yeah. doing on a regular basis. I think you could see him win a lot more games than he did last season. And I think that's only going to help his game grow and his confidence level grow as this team goes through this rebuild. Yeah. I think the biggest thing was him facing 50, 60 shots almost ah. on a nightly basis. Like mm-hmm. no matter how good you play, that's going to lead to fatigue throughout the season yep. a lot faster. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wearing yeah. And, the body. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. And the thing is, he was he was injured a few times, too, at the yeah. towards the end of the season. Yep. So um, probably as a result of that. So um, I'm expecting big things about him, too. I really I really like him as a goaltender. I like well, I've talked to Pat. We've talked to Pat about him um, on Howlers and Growlers quite a few times. So, uh, you know, Vimel, because he's he's going to be really good again this year. And like I say, with with. Team, you know, goalies that are on those rebuilding teams, best not to look at their statistics because probably yeah. not going to look very yeah. good. <laughs> but watch their game and, and watch how they kind of play because looking at those stats, you're just going to get disappointed and, and disenchanted with them. But yeah. looking at how they play, um, that's what you look at. And Vimelka played a heck of a, you know, on a, on a good team, he's probably putting those good, you know, two, under two, um, around that two yeah. range, I think. So yeah. if he gets down to those 20, 25 shots, um, that's pretty good. So we'll see what he does in this next season. I think he's still going to be good, even though his numbers won't look good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the head coach. And he's in his second season as well. So sophomore year for him. Uh, coming in, you know, Andre Torini, he was you know, did a pretty decent job on a, on a team that, you know, very tough to coach rebuilding teams. And I really applaud coaches that have to, um, you know, work with these teams because coming in, expectation is you're going to lose. And that's hard um, to to motivate when you're expected to lose every game. So 
Um, what are you expecting from Torini in his second season? You know, I think he, uh, and I appreciate the call there in his first season. I think he really, um, I think he surprised a lot of people. You know, like you said, it's hard to come into a team as a player and be told that you're going to go through a rebuild. It's hard also as a coach to say you got to lead guys and tell them not to specifically lose, but you got to tell them, hey, this is a rebuild. We are going to lose a lot of games. It's hard as a coach to do that. But, you know, I think Torini really meshed well with this team. Um, you know, coming from a guy like Rick Tockett, who is, the whole system was a very dump and chase heavy kind of, you know, play scheme and all that. I think, yep. you know, the guys really bought into um, Torini's system. You know, after that early season long losing streak to start, once they got wins going, they really start to click. And that was all about buying into his system. And, and once those guys really bought into the system of what he was playing – it really started to show. And the Coyotes were able to string together and pull wins off against like the Maple Leafs and other teams. And, and it really showed. So I think for him, the biggest thing is just keep hammering that home. I mean, that's what you got to hammer home at the end of the day is, you know, it, 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 your guys are there for each other. You know, don't let one guy get down because you're losing. You got to have each other's backs and, you know, and just always, you know, he's got to keep that mentality of, Hey, we may not be, you know, a team that's competing, but we're, we're underdogs. Everybody looks at us as underdogs. You use that to your advantage. That's how you go out and steal games because teams aren't expecting you to be playing yeah. up a fight. So I think he's done a really good job of just keeping that mentality with the team. And I'm expecting him big things from him again this season. And, you know, and especially having some more veterans on his team and all that definitely helped him get it to them to then hammer into those younger guys' minds. Yeah, trying to get them to come out and play with a chip on their shoulder every day yeah. uh, and prove themselves. I think that's a big, big, big uh, motivation point for coaches in rebuilds, right? Is getting them to to buy into that system. Like people are counting you out. You got to you gotta come in and play. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're going to move over to our quick fire round. So Haynes, how we're doing this. Uh, we're going to ask you questions. We're going to go back and forth, throwing questions at you. And we'd love to get your thoughts in one to three sentences, Matt. So uh, nice, quick, <laughs> nice, quick answers are fine in this segment. All right. So I'm going to kick okay. this off. <laughs> what I'm, I'm is <laughs> yeah, the biggest storyline or question mark for the Arizona Coyotes heading into the 2022-23 season? Biggest question mark is, is this team going to be as bad as they were last year, considering Chicago made more substantial moves to be a lot less worse, a lot more worse than they are? <laughs> I love it. We're going to sneak stuff. that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One or two breakout stars coming in. Uh, breakout guys this year for the Coyotes. I am going to go with, man, you're throwing me on the spot here with rosters and trying to remember players off the top of my head. Uh, which is terrible because I work for the team. All right, right for the team. I'm going to say the biggest breakout guys this year, I am going to say that on defense, you're going to have J.J. Moser take the next step in his game. I think he's going to really have a big breakout season. And on forward, I'm actually going to say Christian Fisher. I'm going to take like the it. dark horse yeah. here. Christian Fisher, I think, has a breakout season. I got All one right. more for you. In the press box, Pat Brown. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Breakout season. Uh, yeah, I think – I'm expecting big breakouts from Pat this year. I hope he's listening. I'm expecting him to take the next level of his game this season. I'm expecting, more, I'm expecting three articles daily on, out coming from the Coyotes from him. So I'm yeah. expecting more. I love it. I love it. Along with some videos on YouTube. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's also charged part of that, too. All right. Who is one player that needs to have the biggest bounce back from last season? Jacob Chikrin. Yeah. The, the year he had injury wise, he, if he wants to actually be traded, if that's the case, he has to prove that last season was just a bad year. Yeah. yeah. Big, big. Yeah. Um, one player that could be an X factor this season. An X factor, you said? Yeah. X factor. I'm going to go Bear Hayton. I think he's really progressed his game over the last few seasons. He's really developed into a, a, you know, a strong, solid center for the Coyotes. I think he's an X factor for the team this season. All right. I like that. One rookie or prospect that could surprise and make the roster out of training camp. Liam Kirk. Yes. Good, good. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. What other players should fans be watching? We have not mentioned yet. Oh gosh, we not mentioned. Man, <laughs> quick lot. fire. I'm not going so fast here. Not mentioned. Um, oh, Travis Boyd. 
he had a great boy. season last year. He got paid to a small contract. No one expected anything out of him, and he had his best statistical season in his career ever. I expect him to definitely, you know, contribute just as much as he did last season. He easily produced the same stats. Love it. Another love former it. Canuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just love throwing out four Red Wings and Canucks for y'all. That's that's all. I mean, that's all we ask for on this show, right? Is just hey, talk, well, talk about that. So <laughs> and doing a good job at it. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, who will lead the scoring team in scoring from the forwards? Glenn Keller. Yeah. Easy one. Uh, and on defense. Shane Gossespierre. I like it. Gossespierre, like yes. It. All, right. All right. One player that could be traded before the deadline. Shane Gossespierre. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. 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 We yeah. talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One bold prediction or hot take for the coming season. The Coyotes finally win the first ever all first ever all pick for the first time in their history. <laughs> well, that's a good segue. That's, 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 that's a great segue. Because <laughs> the next question is: Will the Coyotes finish with the best chance of selecting Connor Bedard? Yes, they they will finish with the second or third best odd. They will not get the first overall pick. They will fall to third or fourth because the Coyotes have never picked higher than two, and I don't expect them to pick higher than two. <laughs> well, they've never picked higher than three, and I don't ex- <laughs> and I don't expect them to continue that. <laughs> I love it. I'm expecting yeah, yeah. three to four. And I'm <laughs> going to break it to the Kais fans. We're all pretty realistic here. Three, four. If we get first, we'll celebrate. If we're third or fourth, we'll all shake hands. It's a good day. We'll take three or four. <laughs> and you know what? At, at That pick at three or four is still going to be a huge oh, game changer. You no could matter get, who it is. You could get Michkov. You could get Ben Tilly. You can get, yeah. oh, my gosh. There's going to be um, so much. It's going to be stacked. And, we, and who knows who will even break out you know, this year and they're 17, 18 year old year. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there's I have a, a few chance. guys that could. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll hear quite about them. And oh, the pro- yes. Next prospect corner. All through it. All throughout <laughs> prospect corner. That's the segue into the next one. Yeah. <laughs> prospect corner. <laughs> Second away. Uh, segue into, into the end of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and right. It just rolls next yeah. video up. So I know, I know it's going to end right here. It's going to cut <laughs> off. Jump right into prospect corner. If YouTube has their algorithm, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we let you go, Haynes, we got to ask you to contribute to one of our favorite sections, which is the article of the day. So we want you to pick from the Arizona Coyote writing team, which I know there's a ton of writers to choose from. <laughs> we will let you choose your own if you want. So what, what do you have for us for your article of the day? Man, he, like, man, is it tough to look through all those really talented writers on our team right now? Really? <laughs> Have to narrow it down there to one there. I think I'm going to go with this kid named yeah, Haynes Evans. Uh, you know, he <laughs> seems to be the only guy producing content for the team right now. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to plug myself. It's only me here. Um, I, I'm i not going to plug one piece. I'm just going to plug the whole series. I've been doing a whole 2022 offseason review series for the Coyotes. I'm coming down to the final five players. Um, if you want to read them, this is the time to read them now because I'm getting into the good guys who are actually producing right now. So, <laughs> if you want to read about the guys who are actually on the right role right now, this is the time to read about the guys who are on the roll right now. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big thing going on right now um, and all that. Um, final words, I do want to say, because it's appropriately saying that I'm wearing a shirt that says journey on it. Um, it is going to be a journey for the Caius this season. It's going to yes. be a journey uh, to see who is on this team by the trade deadline. Yeah. If, if no one gets moved, that could potentially happen too as well. But, yes, uh, I will shamelessly plug myself. Please read my off-season review stuff. It's doing very well. I had to – work very hard on some of those articles to write stuff about guys like Carr Timmons who played I think eight games last season that was a really hard article to write about a guy who played eight yes. games a season and had I think one or two points that was a very hard guy to write about yeah yeah I was I was really close to asking a question about him but uh I will yeah, put him he, down he, now as my dark horse if you'd asked me a dark horse candidate that could be a breakout I think he generally could I think if he can stay healthy and get off the injury bug which is like his whole career yeah i think he's he's 23 i think yeah, he he's seriously could be a dark horse candidate for the coyotes i think he starts in the hl i just want to add that up i think he starts in the hl but i think if he stays healthy the coyotes legitimately have a really good young defense on their hands that could be a core piece yeah agree that's yeah awesome. well so that's going to do it for this episode of our hockey writers podcast preview editions Thank you again to Haynes for joining us from the Arizona Coyotes. Please make sure you're going over to our Arizona Coyote page and checking out all of Haynes' great work. Uh, You can follow him on Twitter as well. 
Also, make sure you're following the Hockey Raiders on all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram. We're on TikTok now. Also, sign up, subscribe down below for our YouTube channel so you can follow along with all of our shows, all of our preview shows, and then our podcast as we get back into it. And make sure you're signing up for the Morning Skate newsletter at morningskate.io to get your daily hockey delivered to your inbox. That's going to do it for us from today's episode of this edition of the Hockey Writers Podcast.